In this video, we are going to talk about op-amp, little theories and then practice using an op-amp to amplify a sensor signal and read it to an Arduino. When you have a small signal, you can use an op-amp to amplify that. For example, the audio from a smartphone or from a laptop will be amplified so it can sound louder on an external speaker. Inside an active speaker, it has an amplifier. The amplifier used an op-amp. Another example is when you have a sensor with so tiny or small signal, like a load cell. It needs to be amplified to make sure it is readable with a microcontroller or Arduino. Imagine a load cell that only gives 1 millivolt per kilogram. We will really have difficulties reading the sensor since most microcontrollers like Arduino only has a resolution of 10 bits or about 1024 for 5 volt. So it can only read every 4 millivolt or about every 4 kilogram. Of course, 4 kilogram is really bad accuracy. To make the signal bigger, we can use an op-amp. I believe that many of us that ever learn electrical engineering in school or college must be familiar with op-amp. But do we really know how to use it? Most of it is only theories and we don't really know how to use it in real life. So in this video, I will explain a little theories and just get our hand dirty practicing on how to use an op-amp. There are some op-amp types. The most applicable are non-inverting amplifier, inverting amplifier, and the differential amplifier. Non-inverting amplifier means that the amplifier just amplifies the signal or voltage without inverting it. So if the input is a plus value, it stays plus. Let's take a look at this schematic or configuration. This is a schematic for a non-inverting amplifier. The amplification would be V out per V in. We can get that from 1 plus RF per R in. For example, if we need an 11 times amplifier, we can give RF 1K and R in 10K ohm. So the result is 11 times. Very easy, right? Just RF per R in plus 1. So for example, if we got a 100 millivolt input from a sensor, the output would be around 1100 millivolt and the amplification cannot be more than the voltage source or power source so if you are using 5 volt as a power source to power up the op amp you cannot amplify voltage or signal more than 5 volt now for the inverting amplifier inverting amplifier means that the output result of the amplifier is inverted so if the input is a plus value the output will be negative this is the schematic. The plus and minus input in this diagram is swapped. And now the input will come from the minus input or the inverting input. Now the formula is minus RF per R in without plus 1. So with the same resistor's value, we got minus 10 times amplification. And this configuration will give us minus 1000 millivolt if we have a 100 millivolt input but in real life when you make an inverting amplifier make sure that you have also a minus power source otherwise it won't work and the third one is the differential amplifier differential amplifier means only amplifying the difference voltage between two points for example, if you have a different voltage between point A and B, you can use this amplifier. A real life example would be like ACS712 current sensor. Since the signal we need to amplify is the signal between half of VCC and the signal generated on the output. Another example is like load cell, which is actually a whetstone bridge. This is the configuration of a differential amplifier. We use four resistors and the voltage output is R2 per R1 times the voltage difference between those points. So with the same resistors value as before, 
say we have 0.5 volt at V2 and 0.2 volt at V1, it will give us 3 volt. So in this video, I will demonstrate how to use the non-inverting amplifier, the most applicable in electronics projects. This is the non-inverting amplifier schematic like we saw earlier. In real life, we need to add power source to the op IC. So it will become like this. I will use an lm 358 op IC, since it is cheap and easy to buy everywhere. Now on the right, I already have the lm 358 pinout, so we need to make a circuit according to the schematic and the pins number of the op IC. And I will add the pins number on the schematic on the left side. So here's the complete schematic with the pins number. I will use an LM35 temperature sensor as an input. The sensor output is 10 mV every degrees of Celsius. So if the temperature is 29 degrees of Celsius, the output of the sensor would be around 290 mV. This is the schematic with LM35 added. I already have the components needed. So let's get our hands dirty. Wait, before we continue the video, you can make me really happy by subscribing to this channel and tap the bell so you won't miss new video from me. I make the circuit on the breadboard with 5 volt input from an Arduino. You can use any power source for this circuit. After the wiring is done, let's measure it. The original voltage from the LM35 is about 290 millivolt, as we see on the left multimeter, because the temperature here is about 29 degrees of Celsius. The multimeter on the right is the output. We have the expected result too. It is about 11 times the input. The accuracy is also affected by the resistor's tolerance value. Then I will try to measure the sensor with an Arduino. Just connect the output of the op amp to analog zero. Converting the ADC to voltage, we use this equation. And then we have the result in millivolt. And to convert the voltage to temperature, we use this equation. We divide the voltage by 10 since the sensor gives us 10 mV for every degree of Celsius. And we divide it again by 11 because we amplify the signal by 11 times. Now we have more accuracy on the sensor since the value is already amplified by 11 times. You can have your own experiment on another sensor as well. If you are very new to Arduino and doesn't even know what is an IDC, you can take my Arduino basic course, link in the description. I try to put a hot soldering iron on the sensor and we can see that the voltage or the temperature is rising. So this is the end of the video. 
If you think I also need to make differential amplifier demonstration, leave your comment in the comment section below. As usual, thanks for watching. Consider to support me by joining this channel or just hit that subscribe button. Thank you.